All right, guys. Uh, maybe we get a few people jump on here in a minute. If not, uh, the video will be uh, reposted on YouTube and it'll be reposted on here. Today, I want to uh, share something I've never shared before. So, if you're watching this and you would like to uh, share the feed to get as many people in here as watch it live, would be great. Uh, if you have any trouble hearing me or whatever, please just um, uh, do a comment. <clears throat> Excuse me, I've got a little bit of a cold. Uh, today I am going to share something that I've never shared before. Uh, I've been sitting on this for a little while. Uh, so if you don't care, uh, can everybody hear me okay? If you, if you have any trouble hearing me, just let me know. This is a new camera uh, that I'm using. Uh, share the feed if you want to. If, you, if people want to watch it live, I've also got uh, what I'll do. I'll, I will repost this video on YouTube probably and on our website. But today I'm sharing something that I've never shared before. I think people will find it kind of interesting. So if you don't care, maybe share the feed. Get as many people in as you can. Uh, I got a little something off here to the side. I'm going to show you. Maybe a uh, maybe a little bit difficult for you to see, but uh, I want to show you something. Hello, David Parker. Uh, back about, well, back last year, I was filming for uh, Almost Live Season 2, and I encountered some uh, juvenile juvenile Bigfoot tracks. There was actually, there was actually three Bigfoot tracks in a row. They were uh, approximately 10 inches in length uh, in a perfect inline pattern that anybody knows anything about uh, Bigfoot research. If you've ever found any tracks, you realize that yes, Bigfoot when it is mobile, it, uh, the foot tracks are exactly in a line, just like a, a tightrope. Uh, when I found those three tracks, uh, I actually cached one of them, and uh, once I got the track home, uh, I got to looking around on it. And I made a discovery in it. And I've been sitting on this for a little while. Uh, but uh, there was a hair. Actually, actually, there were several hairs in the casting and in the track itself. Uh, so today, what I'm going to do, I'm going to share with you an actual, what I believe to be, a natural Bigfoot hair uh, came from a track, uh, and this is in an area where I I do a lot of Bigfoot research. I've made a lot of discoveries there over the years. I've uh, been in close proximity of Bigfoot numerous times in this area. And uh, when I say close proximity, I'm talking 30 yards or less, uh, sometimes even closer. But I'm fixing to show you. This is a I'll have to try to adjust it around a little bit where you can see it. This is a actual, actual hair. Let me try to get it where it's in focus from a Bigfoot. And what's unique about this, there was actually about three hairs. There was about three Bigfoot hairs in this track. Uh, what is unique about this, and you may have heard other people talk about this, is these hairs are rather coarse and they are virtually transparent at times. I'll try to put a black background and see if you can see it a little better. I have taken a, a light of a very powerful uh, survival light. And when you shine a light on this, the hair even becomes more transparent. Um, the light basically almost really looks like it just passes through it. But that, I've never shared this before, and I've had it for, well, that's probably June or July or so, or last year maybe, maybe somewhere around that time. I'm not for sure. I'd have to look, look back up to date. But, let's see if I can get it back in focus. 
but that I don't actually know actually how long this hair is. You're probably looking at close to two inches. But what is like I was saying, what is unique is that this hair is almost transparent if you shine a light on it. Uh, and there's a little bit of darkness. This end of the hair is really almost completely transparent. And I'm under the impression that this is the hair where it actually goes into the, the body. Then as you come on out on this end, there's a small area that is dark. And then on the end of that, it's back clear again. So this could explain why people want to say that Bigfoot goes invisible, uh, why Bigfoot disappears. It's because the hair. The hair is almost transparent. And in certain lighting situations, this hair, would it, it becomes virtually like looking through glass almost. It. And this came from a Bigfoot track. I've actually got the casting. I'm going to make a uh, copy of it. And I've never shared this before. And I'm not interested in getting it tested or, or sending it off or any of that stuff. I don't, I don't care about that. Uh, this is something I'll keep in my personal collection. And I'll share. Maybe, you know, people come around or something like that. Or if I ever get a building to put all my junk in. Uh, but I, the day I got this, I actually... When I found the three tracks, I didn't notice the hair really at first until I, I, I got it home, I guess, and it was it was embedded in the casting. And this is from a juvenile because the track was roughly about, like I say, about 10 inches long. So I'm under the impression that due to the, the hair quality of if I, if I, if I, I can't shine, I can shine a light on it, but he'll glare and you won't be able to see it. But when you shine a light on this, it becomes basically transparent. Uh, so I think some people might even, a polar bear is kind of similar to that, that their hair is kind of transparent. So that is something I wanted to share today that I've never shared before. And I don't know, I've had it for a little while. I hope you can see that okay. And I've got a little bit of a cold, so forgive me of my sniffles. And that's something I'll just keep in my archive. Uh, I think maybe that could answer the question as to why people think that Bigfoot goes invisible. Uh, it's not necessarily that they're going invisible or jumping dimensions or anything like that. It's that their, heart, their hair is made up of a quality that uh, either absorbs or reflects or even let, lets light pass completely through it like it, it appears to do in this. And if it did that, it's going to be very hard to see. But, but in case you join a little bit late, this hair, it's clear on one end. Then you get close to the actual end of the hair, what I would believe to be the tip of the hair. There's a little bit of blackness to it, and then it's back clear again. And that came from a track. And actually, if you want to see the track discovery and the uh, pouring of the casting, it is in season two of almost live i don't know what episode it's in but that's where i found it now i've not shared it i've had it for well, i don't know probably pushing up close to a year and i'm not shared it so but i thought today i would share that and the other hairs i of course i touched them you know it's, uh, which i pulled this one off with a tweezer out of the casting and it's definitely not a, uh, uh, if I had to liken it to any animal, I would say it's more similar probably to a deer hair. It's definitely not a bear, but it's, it's, it's probably a little coarser than a, a little coarser than a, uh, than a deer hair. But I just want to share that with you. So. Oh, so that's something I'll just keep and keep back in my little archives. But I'll just cut this video short, and I just want to share that with you. I've not shared it, like I said, and I found it in a track casting that I personally made. I actually still have the uh, a casting, and I'm going to uh, 
I'm going to make a copy of it, the, uh, of the plaster casting. I've just not had time to do it. But that's it. I thank you guys for watching and uh, hope you enjoyed the video. And I'll, I'll see you next time.